laissez-faire capitalism and individual rights. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, invites you to the conversation. The Yaron Brook Show starts now on AM 560. The answer. Hey, so you guys out there uh, marching for science? Today is the March for Science. Uh, you should be out in the streets. I mean, uh, any of you anti-science? Don't you want more science? Don't you support science? I certainly do. But would I march for a March for Science on Earth Day? No. No, not on Earth Day. I mean, if they had it on another day, I would consider it. But the very fact that the March for Science is on Earth Day, suggests that this is about politics, this is about a philosophical agenda, this is about, indeed, the negation of science. Because what does Earth Day represent? Earth Day is like a, a, a march to scare people into believing that the Earth is going to, the world is going to end any day now. All because of you, because of our human activity. Earth Day is an anti-man, anti-life, anti-industrialization, anti-human progress, anti-science day. That's what Earth Day is, anti-progress, anti-technology. It's about shutting us down. And yet, they want to pretend, they want to pretend that they are the rational defenders of science. Now, I wish that were true. I know, not that I wish they were the defenders. I wish, I wish there was a real march of science. I would march for a march for science. I mean, there's actually uh, a lot of reasons to worry about science and to be pro-science right now and to advocate for science because I believe science is under attack constantly by left and right. But think about what Earth Day represents. Earth Day was started in 1970 by the ecology movement back then it was called, that later morphed into the environmentalist movement. And what is the premise of Earth Day? Well, I, 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 I have a quote from an article I was reading. It says, the Earth is dying. The science is clear. It's so easy and obvious. So why can't all of you understand it? Really? The Earth is dying? The Earth is going to kill us? I mean, I, give me a break. Human beings have this millennial, uh, you know, uh, uh, end of the world. It's almost scenario embedded in their minds that keeps coming back over and over and over again. We're, we're going to die of overpopulation. We're going to die of global cooling. We're going to die of cancer because of all the chemicals we spew out. We're going to die because the world is getting warmer. And yet, life expectancy goes up. The health of people all across the, the planet is improving. Life is becoming better. We're becoming wealthier, particularly people in poor countries are becoming wealthier. So, you know, instead of, instead of, you know, celebrating human life, human achievement, human progress, human health, the human environment, which is getting better and better all the time, our water is cleaner, our air is cleaner, Instead, they constantly, no matter what we do to clean the environment, they constantly tell us that we're on the verge of destruction, that we need to do something dramatic to save ourselves. And usually that something dramatic is stop, halt, don't live, don't use carbon fuels, don't drive your car, sacrifice, be noble, it's for a good cause, we're going to save humanity. That's what they're telling us at Earth Day. And it's sad, and, and, and this is the Republicans' fault, it's sad that these environmentalists have managed to co-opt science because they don't represent science. They represent a religion. They represent mass hysteria. They represent emotionalism, panic, fear. But the problem is the Republican Party is represented by people who don't believe in evolution. So they can't defend science. So politically, nobody, nobody is defending science. Politically, all we have are gangs that want to influence science in their own direction. So the Republicans want to stop using stem cells, you know, embryonic stem cells, because 
That's God is forbidden. And the Democrats, oh no, the science is conclusive. We are on the verge of ending the world unless we take over and stop industrialization and stop technological progress. Neither one is science. Neither party is the pro-science party. Both are anti-science. And that's why I'd like to see a real science day, a real march for science, a march that represents a defense of real science, of evidence-based science, of looking out there into reality and figuring out what works, explain reality. What explains reality and what doesn't? Both the theoretical level and then turning it into practical knowledge. I mean, and we've advanced fantastically over the last 300, 400 years scientifically. I mean, it's unbelievable how much we have. And even more so, I'd say, in taking that science and applying it to our lives, to applying it to the stuff that makes our lives successful, from indoor plumbing, which requires science, to building skyscrapers, to all the goodies from cars, to, to all the stuff that we use, to, of course, the technology that I'm using to broadcast this show and every other piece of technology, the supercomputer I have in my pocket, and on and on and on we go. We are massive beneficiaries of the application of science to solving the problems involved in human life and existence. All right, we're going to take a call from Skylar, and then we'll go on. Hey, Skylar, how's it going? Happy Exploit Earth Day, Dr. Brooks. <laughs> Yeah, well, I wish I wish it was I wish that's what they were celebrating. I'm all for exploiting the earth. I'll get to that in a minute. Go ahead. It's related to that. Uh, the three R's: reduce, reuse, and recycle. How proper is it, and when is it? To, when is it proper to use those things? I think it's ridiculous. Why, why would we reduce? We want abundance. We don't want a reduction. We want to increase our standard of living. We want more wealth. We want more technology. We want more goodies. We want more stuff. We want to live the best life that we can live, materially and spiritually. And, and the spirit needs the material, so they, you need to maximize both. And there's no limit to human needs. We want more, and that's a good thing. We want to innovate. We want to go to the stars. I mean, there's no limit to our ambition, to our dreams, to our wants. And technology and science and engineering and, and, uh, and uh, capitalism really make it possible for us to achieve anything we want. So why reduce? And the same thing with reuse. I mean, sure, when there's an economic reason to reuse and recycle, then, then there'll be an economic motivation to do so. But mostly, why spend the energy on reusing and recycling when, my, when we can spend the energy on building and creating new stuff? I mean, I, I like to use the, I mean, recycling just doesn't make any sense. The, the trucks that pick up the recycling and, and all the different garbage cans that we now have to put out in our yard uh, probably pollute more than anything you say by actually recycling. And it's not clear that you save anything by recycling. I'll, I'll give you an example. A paper, nobody believes this, but this is actually pure, simple economics and reality. The more paper you recycle, the fewer trees there are going to be. Because if you recycle all the paper, then paper producers say, well, we'll need less paper, new paper in the future, and they'll plant less trees. And they'll turn forests, which are usually uh, grown in order to produce lumber for, tr for, for paper, for, for paper products, they'll change the use of that land. They'll turn it into agricultural land, they'll turn it into housing development, they'll build a factory, they'll build a shopping mall, who knows what they'll build there. But they'll find a more economic use for that same land. So the lower the demand for paper in the future, the fewer trees there will be. Trees are a, a renewable resource. Any renewable resource, the quantity of that renewable resource is completely dependent on the demand for that resource. So if the demand for chickens go down because we stop eating chicken, there will be fewer chickens in the world. If the demand for paper goes down tomorrow dramatically, there will actually be fewer trees in the world because we'll stop cutting them down. Now, yes, this assumes private property, and this is true in the United States. It might not be true in the Amazon, but it certainly is true in the United States. And as a consequence, because paper demand has gone through the roof over the last 100 years, there are more trees today in America than ever before. Plus, we need less land in order to produce the same amount of food because of technology. So um, I'm all against reduce, reuse, recycle. 
Um, I'm for go, maximize your life. Go ahead. Uh, we've only got 40 seconds to make it quick. Is that also glass and metal and wood and all that you as know, well? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if metal was, was – it made sense to recycle metal, then they would pay you to recycle metal. So I think it's true that in large quantities of metal, right, like, like cars and stuff like that, it makes sense to recycle. There's a huge recycling business in steel. But I'm not sure it makes sense in many other things. And, again, the marketplace would tell us. All right, Skylar, really appreciate the call. Good question. Uh, most recycling doesn't make any sense scientifically and economically. All right, you're listening to the Iran Book Show. We'll be back in a few seconds. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer from the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm right, Kevin Henry taking a look at the roads. Here. If you're mm -hmm. traveling eastbound on 8094 in up? northwest Indiana, going to see some slowdowns between Clay and Ripley. Just a some debris bit. scattered the across the roadway there. Bit. Westbound sure. delays from Absolutely. Klein to Calumet. That's about it for your northwest Indiana trip. Westbound on the Jane Adams. A couple right lanes are down. How's that if I yell a little bit? Uh, eastbound has that same road work, but only westbound has a delay. Uh, the inbound even is taking you, you a 31 a bit minutes more? from Lake Cook. Another 25 from there can. to downtown I can, I can on the Kennedy. Up, uh, 40 total from O'Hare Airport. We're just outbound the to the, the junction takes 15 okay. local. Uh, 9 Express and 35 total okay. outbound. Okay. Outbound. Inbound Ike at 48 minutes, about a minute less outbound. And the inbound Stevenson taking you 46 and 40 out. 55 and Decibel mostly cloudy right now. It's clear tonight, a low of 42 and a high of 60 on Sunday with some sun. Next update, 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. Do you own or run a business in Illinois that succeeded in this challenging economic environment? If so, we want to hear about it. AM 560's Business Tour 2017, presented by Signature Bank, will be highlighting business success stories. Tell us your story and be a part of a live broadcast of Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy. Find out more and submit your information at 560theanswer.com slash business. That's 560theanswer.com slash business. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit Ayn Rand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to Ayn Rand.org today. If you like what you hear on the Yaron Brook Show and want to engage more with host Yaron Brook, be sure to follow him on social media. Lucky for you, it's easier than ever to get updates, ask questions, and hear answers from one of the leading minds in objectivism. Follow Yaron today on Twitter, at Yaron Brook. YouTube, Why Brook. That's Twitter, at Yaron Brook. And YouTube, Why Brook. You can also sign up for show updates at Blog Talk Radio. Simply search the Yaron Brook Show. Are you stuck in a bad home mortgage? Well, join the club that has about 10 million other American families. But I may be able to help you. My name is Lou Bridges. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Lou Bridges & Associates. We've been helping distressed homeowners like you for over eight years now. Give us a call. We provide free consultations. I guarantee you it will not be a sales pitch. We will give you our honest legal analysis, counsel, recommendations, and advice regarding your options. We are experts in doing loan modifications successfully. We know the regs. We understand the process. Most importantly, we don't take no for an answer. We fight, we are prepared, and we win. We save houses, we make houses affordable. So if you want to keep your house affordable, contact us. Go to bridgeslaw.net or call 224-513-1231. That's 224-513-1231. Remember people, never give up the land, fight for truth and justice, you do that. Yeah, I guarantee you'll never be alone in this country. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. Well, it seems like we've got at least one angered caller. We'll get to Pincus in a minute. Uh, he wants to challenge me on the whole recycling thing. But let me just say again, we're talking about uh, the March for Science and, and Earth Day and I mean, I'm all for science. Not, not am I all for science. I'm always for science. I'm a huge advocate for science all the time, every day, not on any special days, all the time. But, but, I don't think this Earth Day has anything to do with science. I think Earth Day is anti-science, and to combine the two means that the environmentalists are trying to steal 
to steal the idea of science and make it theirs when the idea of science should be in the hands of those who believe in freedom and capitalism and reason and individualism. And we'll get to the particular complaints of the environmentalists, particularly the idea of more government funding and, and uh, global warming and, and all of that stuff. We'll, we'll touch on them. We can't, we can't do the whole topic justice, particularly given how many people are already calling in. But give me a break. Give me a break. Science does not align to the political left. Science aligns with freedom, with progress. And uh, well, we'll get to whether you need government to fund science or not in a minute. And by the way, if, if any of you like this show and, and uh, would like to hear more of the Iran Book Show, uh, I have other episodes that I do uh, separate from AM560. And you can pick up any of those episodes on any podcasting application. So they're on iTunes. They're on the Apple Podcast. They're on Stitcher. They're on any of these things. They come from uh, blogtalkradio.com. You can find me there as well. But just look for you, the Aron Brooks Show, Y-A-R-O-N-B-R-O-O-K. And you can find uh, old episodes. You can find new episodes. There's, there's a ton of content uh, that I've produced over the years on this. You can also find me on YouTube. And as I think one of the commercials said, Twitter, Yaron Brook. And at Facebook, it's Y Brook. So, so join the club. You know, we, we can do a lot more together and have a lot more exchanges if you uh, follow me and all those. All right, Pincus, uh, you're frustrated and angry. Go at it. The science is settled, Yarod. Uh, the science is settled. And this sounds like just another Koch brothers, you know, Exxon Mobil, don't pay attention to the real damage. You know, I mean, you talk about, oh, don't recycle. What about the externalities? What about the asthma for kids? What about the damage that people like you are causing long-term to, the, to rivers, to the environment, to species that don't even exist anymore, plants that used to grow in, in certain areas? So, sure. you know, it's so easy to say, oh, we'll worry about it another time and man will adapt. But you're causing major impact to the environment, and that's what science is about. So you say you're all for science, but yet you're ignoring the science that 99% of scientists agree that we're hurting the planet. How do you respond to that? Well, I mean, if when the case is that scientists really agree that real damage is being done, real damage is being done to, uh, to my river or to the river from which I draw water, then those rivers are cleaned up. Indeed, we live in a world today where most of the waterways are unbelievably clean, indeed, you know, cleaner than they've ever been before. That's why you can open up a tap anywhere in your home, anywhere around, anywhere around the United States, and feel free to just drink the water straight out of that tap because we are so rich, we've advanced so much, that we've managed to clean up all this water because it's in our self-interest to have clean water. We don't spew really deadly stuff into the air anymore because we figured out that that was really harmful to human life and we stopped it. The problem is that more and more of environmentalism is not, is not about human life. It's not about how well uh, human beings live and how prosperous and how successful and how long and how healthy we as individuals live. It's become much more of a movement that's just anti, anti-technology. And it's about the worship. It's become about the worship of the earth, the worship of Mother Earth. That's why it's called Earth Day. It's about the worship yeah, of the Mother it's Earth. It's about the worship of nature, not about human beings. Now, I claim that we live today because of capitalism, because of wealth creation. We live in the cleanest environment in human history. We, we live longer. We live better lives. We live happier lives. We live richer lives than ever before in human history. So what do we got to complain about? All this hysteria and all this panic. Uh, you want to recycle? Fine. Nobody should stop you from recycling. You want to... You want to uh, stop using carbon fuels? Fine. Stop using carbon fuels. But don't, don't force me to do it. And I was going to get to this point later, but one of, the, one of the signs that these people are not really pro-science is that if you believe that carbon fuels are, are, are causing real damage to the earth, real damage to the earth, then why doesn't everybody... Uh, you know, uh, advocate for nuclear energy. A nuclear energy is clean. Nuclear energy has no carbon footprint. Nuclear energy is unbelievably safe. Uh, there have been fewer deaths in the nuclear power plants all around the world than from windmills and solar panels, never mind gas and coal and all this other stuff. It's unbelievably safe, unbelievably. Uh, it's expensive because of all the massive regulations, 
that exists so that you, nobody nobody wants to build a nuclear plant, plant in the United States because because government has made it so expensive. But why doesn't everybody advocate for more research in nuclear power plants to lower the costs and to create small nuclear power plants all around the world to produce cheap, efficient, clean electricity? I mean, if they advocated for that, then I would say, okay, may, you know, maybe maybe there's something here. But I don't trust their science when, because I don't think it's really science, when their solution is always, whatever the problem is, the solution is stop living. Stop producing. Stop industrialization. Shut down carbon. Shut down oil. Shut down coal. When these things are scientifically unbelievably good. So I just don't buy the whole environmentalism. It's become a religion, not a science. Uh, I'm not against cleaning the environment for human beings. I think there are plenty of mechanisms to do that without massive regulations or massive government institutions in order to enforce it. Um, I don't place the, the, the so-called, I don't know, uh, 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 planet over the lives of human beings. The planet is there so that I can live a better life. And the only way human beings live, and this, is, this will be my final point. Thanks for calling, Pincus. Really appreciate it. But the, 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 the way human beings live, and John, I know you're holding, and I'll probably get to you after this break because let me make this point. The way human beings survive, as compared to any other animal, is that we use our minds to change the environment. We figure out what is necessary for us to live a good life, to not be exposed to the elements, to be able to bring in food, to be able to improve our condition, to be able to, for more and more human beings, to be able to live. And we do all this by using our mind to figure out how to change the environment. So most animals, right, all animals, they need a place to live. They, they, you know, they find a cave, they live in a cave. That's what human beings did initially. But then the cave was kind of cold and the fires were smelly and it was not a pleasant place to live. So they went out of the cave. And plus, the saber-toothed tiger lived in the cave and, and he was scary. So they went out of the cave and we started building mud huts or wood huts or whatever, right? But that required real intelligence. We had to take mud and reshape our environment. We had to chop down trees and build something. We are a unique animal in the sense that we do this, right? We don't rely on food to keep ourselves warm. We rely on making fire. We rely on creating clothes. We rely on building homes. Everything we do, everything in your home right now, every single thing is a consequence of mining, of cutting down trees, of scooping up silicon from sand or whatever, it all involves changing the environment for the sake of making human life better. And that's what the planet is here for. It's for us to exploit, rationally exploit by the use of our mind, in order to allow us as human beings, as individual humans, to live better lives. And we take science to understand the world around us so that we can exploit more. Right? So a long, long time ago, there used to be this black muck that used to be oozed out of the ground. And it used to dramatically lower property prices because it would smell and you couldn't do anything with it and it destroyed agricultural crops and it could, it could light up, I think, on fire. And it was just awful until science discovered that we could take this black muck and refine it down to a million different products. Almost everything in your room, wherever you are, has carbon fuels in it. It has oil in it, whether it's the plastics, whether it's some of the stuff they put on, uh, uh, on the walls, paint. Paint is, 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 is made from, from oil, uh, you know, whether it's component with, within a computer, not to mention your car and your electricity and everything else. So to demonize, that's another sign that there's something wrong with the environmentalist movement. To demonize this source, this wonderful source. But notice, it used to be a pest, and it's the human mind that made it a resource. To demonize this wonderful resource, that's just a tragedy. All right, you're listening to your own book show. We'll be right back after the break and take a call from John about environmentalism. Do you own or run a business in Illinois that succeeded in this challenging economic environment? If so, we want to hear about it. 
AM 560's Business Tour 2017, presented by Signature Bank, will be highlighting business success stories. Tell us your story and be a part of a live broadcast of Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy. Find out more and submit your information at 560theanswer.com slash business. That's 560theanswer.com slash business. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. French voters head to the polls tomorrow in a hotly contested race for that country's next president. They'll be choosing between 11 different candidates. The two top vote-getters will then go on to a runoff. But it shows how unsettled and how unhappy the population is here, both about the, the status quo, about a stagnant economy, and also concerned about uh, insecurity. That was underscored by that attack on Thursday on police officers. One officer killed, two injured, ISIS claiming responsibility. Fox is Greg Palcott in Paris. In cities across the country and the world today, people taking part in the March for Science, seen by many as a protest against the Trump administration's views on issues like climate change. I'm here to support the, the notion that our society has to be based on rationality, on reason. Philip Vadat's a social scientist originally from Iran on the march in Boston. Fox News, we report, you decide. How can you get from here to there? We've got the answer from the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Kevin Henry taking a look at the roads out at Morton Grove. Crews with an accident at Golf near Washington Street. The inbound Edens takes you a half hour from Lake Cook. The inbound Kennedy, 45 from O'Hare, 25 from the junction. Crash on the right shoulder near Irving Park. Outbound side to Montrose at 14 minutes, 9 in the Express, 32 to O'Hare. The inbound Eisenhower 50 from Thorndale jammed on the extension between North and the Tri-State, then pretty heavy Wolf to Oak Park and Western to the Burn Interchange. If you're coming from Mannheim, it'll take you 32, 31 back to Mannheim and 44 back to Thorndale. Almost an hour inbound on the Stevenson with delays Lamont to Route 83, first to Kedzie and Ashland to Lakeshore Drive. Outbound a little bit better at 42 minutes. Right now in Chicago, 58 degrees, mostly cloudy, clear tonight, a low of 42, a high of 60 tomorrow with sun. Next update, 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Marshall, Ph.D., host of Healthline. Join me live and hear the latest breakthrough information for you and your family. This month's special is Melatonin PG, the world's first live source probiotic fermented melatonin for premier brain, sleep, immune, and antioxidant support. Buy two bottles, get the third one free. Call 800-370-3447. Join Dr. Bob Marshall for Healthline. Saturday morning at 10 on AM 560, The Answer. When The Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the novel became an instant classic and continues to provoke heated debates. What motivates a creative thinker? Is it a selfless desire to benefit mankind, a hunger for fame, fortune, and accolades, the need to prove superiority, or is it a self-sufficient drive to pursue a creative vision independent of others' needs or opinions? Ayn Rand addresses these questions through her portrayal of Howard Rourke, an innovative architect who, as she puts, struggles for the integrity of his creative work against every form of social opposition. It's also the story of his love affair with a woman who seeks to defeat him. The Fountainhead is as relevant today as it was when Rand first penned it. The novel was also a personal landmark for Rand. In Howard Works, she presented for the first time the uniquely Ayn Rand hero, man as he could be and ought to be. Order your copy today at Amazon.com. The Ayn Rand Institute campus is an exciting online destination offering free e-courses on Ayn Rand and her revolutionary philosophy of objectivism. Whether you recently picked up your first Rand book or have been reading her novels and nonfiction for years, ARI Campus has something for you. On campus, you'll discover a variety of multimedia courses covering Rand's literary classics, specific aspects of thought, and how to apply her ideas to your life. Get started today at campus.aynrand.org. See you on campus. Why choose Tabota and Associates to handle your retirement? Well, because we provide objective advice and concierge service, investments, insurance, retirement planning, all at one location. We also partner with qualified attorneys and CPAs to provide complete financial strategies for our clients. We use a variety of investment and insurance products to custom design retirement plans that can give clients a clear look at their future. We help you stay on the path toward financial independence 
If you don't want to do it yourself and you want to work with a team to create a financial strategy for your future, give us a call. 630-777-7955. That's 630-777-7955. Would you rather get retirement advice from some TV show host who doesn't know anything about you or to Boda and Associates? 630-777-7955. To Boda and Associates is a registered investment advisory firm. Jack to Boda is an investment advisor representative and insurance professional. Investing in risk, including the possible loss of principal, investment advisory services offered through AE Wealth Management, LLC. No traditional conservative view, nor the standard libertarian ones. Welcome back to the discussion of Ayn Rand's radical fundamental principles of freedom. This is the Yaron Brook Show on AM560, The Answer. So we're talking today about the absurdity of having uh, the March for Science on Earth Day of all days. Uh, we just heard a clip during the news show uh, about reason and science, uh, reason and rationality, and that's what science represents. Absolutely, I am all for that. But the environmentalism movement, unfortunately, and the and the and the other people behind this march have nothing to do with reason and rationality. And uh, you know, the problem is that Fox, which is airing that, which aired that that clip, and the right Republican Party or whatever, have also been anti-science and don't represent reason and rationality. They tend to represent faith and religion, which is the opposite of reason and rationality. So what you get here is, a, is this alternative of two groups, and this is how we think about the world, two groups. Those who claim they're pro-science, but are really undercutting science with environmentalism, and those who are pro-faith and just are pro-science when it's convenient for them. And there's no real pro-science movement. I'm for science for understanding the way the world lives, of applying reason and rationality to everything we do, not only when it's politically convenient to do so, not only when it, does, when it doesn't contradict, you know, some biblical statement. All right, if you want in on the conversation, 312-642-5600, what do you think about the March for Science? What do you think about science in general and about environmentalism? 312 Six four two five six zero zero. Love to hear from somebody who's out there marching or has been marching or from somebody who is a big Earth Day supporter. Come on, call in. 312-642-5600. And we're going to go to John. And I'm curious what John has to say. Hey, John, how's it going? Good, Yaron. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Uh, well, first and foremost, and I, and I want you to hear me out, on this one first, and I'll start by saying I'm extremely conservative, and my views lie always lie on the right versus the left. Uh, and 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 the thing that I don't understand is I don't understand why it always has to be set up or why there has to be a schism involved in that. Uh, an argument with environmentalism being for or against, why it has to be a binary argument. Why can't you be capitalist? Why can't you be conservative? And why can't you still want to be uh, saving the environment? And I'll pose to you this. Yeah. In, in the defense of uh, humans and human uh, exploitation, as you're trying to, I guess, put an argument for the, uh, the putting forth or advocating science versus the environment, if we go on to pollute our Earth and our environment, then that only ruins the environment and our planet for humans. I, it it kind of wrecks yeah. our cause. So I agree I with you. I don't understand why we can't be pro-environmental yeah. and pro-capitalist and pro-conservative as well. So I think we can be, but that's not what this march is about, and that's not what these people are about. But, but I think we can be, and this is the sense in which I think we can be. If we realize that the environment is the human environment, and the things that damage human beings are not good. We have a very good legal system to take care of this stuff. If you pollute the river from which I'm drinking, I sue you and we remedy the situation. If you pollute the air that I am breathing, I, you know, there's legal recourse for me against you. If you, you can't dump your garbage into my backyard. And indeed, I believe that the more capitalist we are, the more we emphasize private property, the more all the land and the rivers and the lakes belong to individuals, actual private property, the cleaner they will be. 
because we know in the American legal system that you can't pollute my private property. So if we, if we care about clean air and clean water, the best thing we should, the, the thing that we should value the most is capitalism, which means private property rights. We need to get the government out of the business of owning rivers, lakes, vast quantities of land. We need the government out of the business of trying to regulate every little thing that we do. And let us, through negotiation and through the legal system, resolve disputes to minimize you doing something that harms me, right? Or me doing something that harms somebody else. That's how you get pro-freedom, pro-capitalist, consistent protection of the human environment. But when people go out there and say, look, the earth is warming and we've decided, and, and we could argue the science, and I'm not a scientist, I'm not going to argue the science, that it's carbon, it, it, it's carbon emission, and the solution is you have to stop driving your car, we have to stop producing electricity with coal and natural gas and all these things. That can't be right. I mean, I'm all for finding scientific solutions to cooling down the temperature of the earth if warming is really a problem. How about sprinkling some stuff in the atmosphere? I don't know. Let's figure it out. But the idea that you should stop living your kind of life, that we should stop capitalism, that we should stop progress, cannot be a solution to a problem, any kind of environmental problem. Because at the end, the environment is there for us to live in. And if our standard of living is going to plummet so that we can save a few degrees uh, increase in, in warmth, that's 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 it can't be rational that can't be right the standard is human life the standard is individual human flourishing all right that music suggests that we're running out of time thanks john i, I mean i agree with you science should not be political that's the most important point you should get out of this show science is not left science is not right science is about the truth and you'll hear the truth right here on the iran book show Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer from the WoodfieldNissan.com Traffic Center. I'm Kevin Henry taking a look at the roads out in Morton Group, a crash at Gulf in Washington, Elgin at Liberty and Page, and in Roselle at Irving Park and Roselle Road. Eden's inbound. It's going to be a half hour from Lake Cook, almost another half hour from there into Can't downtown on the Kennedy. 45 from the airport, right Sharon, shoulder a block and crash at Irving. Uh, outbound to Montrose taking you 14 uh, Express, saving okay. some time Sounds at 932 to O'Hare. 50 inbound on the Ike from Thorndale, 32 yeah, right from Mannheim. Out to Mannheim takes 31, 44 to Thorndale. Stevenson in from 355 at 55 minutes, 37 from the Tri-State. You're jammed between Lamont and Route 83 with a left lane block and crash. Outbound Gapers starting right around the Tri-State, 45 to 355. Right now in Chicago, 58, mostly cloudy, dropping to 42 with clear skies tonight. A high of 60 on Sunday with some sun. Next update in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there's a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's free books to teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at aynrand.org support. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit AynRand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to AynRand.org today. 2017 marks the 60th anniversary of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Twelve years in the writing, it is Rand's masterwork. Despite being published six decades ago, the novel continues to gain recognition and profoundly influence business leaders, thought leaders, and a growing number of political leaders. Its presence in today's culture cannot be denied. The fascination with Atlas Shrugged persists because it grapples with the fundamental problems of human existence and presents radically new answers. An updated cover for the mass market edition of the novel recently hit stores. Order your copy today at Amazon. Whether you're an adoring fan who wants to add this new edition to your personal library or someone who wants to read the book for the first time to see what all the fuss is about, pick up your copy of Atlas Shrugged today. 
Order on Amazon. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. So today we're talking about Earth Day and how the left has kind of stolen Earth Day to do a march on science when uh, they don't really even represent the march on, uh, they don't represent science. Uh, the whole Earth Day thing I've talked about is, is, is a, just a travesty. And to associate Earth Day with science, I mean, that's just awful. Look, I'm not a scientist and I don't have a strong opinion. I, I have an opinion, but I don't have a strong opinion about the science behind the idea of global warming. I just don't trust many of the advocates for this idea. And I don't believe them. I, I, I have a hard time just believing them. But again, I, I, I'm not a scientist. I haven't evaluated the numbers, the models, the, the science. I just know that these people, every, all of their predictions have been wrong in the past. So I find it hard to believe them when they predict stuff for the future. Um, but the main thing, the most important thing we need to do is separate science from politics. I mean, if it's true that human activity is, you know, uh, uh, burning carbon is causing the earth to warm, then I would like a non-political answer about how fast is it happening, what are the real dangers involved, what is the consequence to human life, plant life, the oceans, everything else. Is it the case that Florida is going to flood? And if it does, is that the end of the world? What, what exactly are the consequences of, of what we're facing? Science. I want science. And I want the scientists to be able to say, look, we don't really know. I mean, that's a good scientist. When they look at a complex system like, uh, like weather, climate, they're willing to say, I don't know. I'm just not sure. I mean, these, here are some probabilities. I'd like to see that. And I'd like it to see divorced from politics, from the Democratic Party, Republican Party, or even what to do about it. Because then the second question is, okay, what do we do about it? Well, we could just stop producing and making electricity and do all these things. That seems like a really bad answer. We could replace carbon-based fuel with alternative energy. Wait a minute, but alternative energy costs a huge amount of money. There's no way to really replace all the carbon that we're using with alternative energy. And our standard of living would drop dramatically if we did that. Eh, that's not a good answer. Let's list 10 answers, but scientifically, not politically, but scientifically, and then use to decide the solution, the standard of human flourishing. Is this good for human life or bad for human life? Not for the planet, for human life. And it might turn out that even if the globe is warming, even if the, 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 the sea levels are rising, it's better to leave it alone, that that is the least costly for human life than any of the alternatives that we have. So we'll buy more air conditioning. So some people will have to move to higher ground. All right, big deal. But I'd like to see all of that analyzed rather than what we get, which is basically hysteria. The world is ending. We are all going to die. And we need to, we need to do something now, and that something needs to be incredibly costly and incredibly destructive to individual human life. All right, we got Sharon on the line, and uh, I think she's going to agree with me on some of this. Hey, Sharon, how's it going? Hi, you are. I'm very nice. Thank you for taking my call. This is how I look at it. I look at the left as being the command and control center where it's the resurrection of the brown shirts basically trying to discover themselves and disguise themselves in the color green. What they want is centralized command and control. To quote something that uh, Nancy Pelosi said during the, uh, I guess, the eruption of the Obamacare bill, this is just something that Americans will have to accept. And this is the problem. You can have stalwarts on the far right who are also uh, dictatorial in that way. Yep. But I've heard it mainly coming out of the left. We are dynamic uh, as human beings, and the Earth is dynamic. Yep. The oil basically is emitted from the center of the planet, so there's nothing unnatural about the oil. Neither is there anything unnatural about we using it for our uses. Well, and, and there's nothing unnatural people. about human beings. We are part of nature, and it's amazing yes. to me that on Earth they, they celebrate plants yes. and they celebrate mud and they celebrate yes. dirt. But they don't celebrate human beings. They don't celebrate oil. They don't celebrate our achievements. Aren't we part of nature? Aren't we a, an aspect of nature? And let me, let me agree with you on this command and control. We used to call environmentalists, uh, they're like watermelons, green on the outside, red on the inside. Because it's interesting. All those commies in the 60s, they all turned environmentalists because they, they learned 
that they could stop progress and production and they could increase command and control and central planning more through environmentalism than through any other means. Unfortunately... Well, I agree with yeah. you. That is true. They want to control the populace, and yes. this is the bottom line. Yes. Once they control the air you breathe and everything else... I think when that's I right. Growing up, the, snow, the snow is black. Yeah. I think we do know how to <laughs> basically improve our lot here. And I just will mention something briefly. What the Bible does say, we are the stewards over this planet, and I think we're smart enough to know how to use the natural resources. Well, so I don't see where it goes against nature. I don't even see this false science that has even erupted from this far left, and that's all it is. It is transferring wealth from one pocketbook, someone else's wallet, to someone else's wallet. I, I mean, I agree with you. I think – oops, sorry, I disconnected you, but that was accidentally. Sorry about that. Um, but I, I agree that that's what they're after. I, I agree that we, we can use science to change our environment, to make our lives better, and we can do it in a way – that is not going to lead us to die. We're not that stupid. We're not that ignorant. And indeed, it's science that what protects us from being too stupid and too ignorant. So let's have real science, not nonpartisan science. I also have to mention, just because it's me, and, and, and when I hear the left wants to control our lives, I, I you know, I, I object because everybody wants to control our lives. You think, you think, uh, our CEO in charge, our president, uh, Donald Trump, doesn't want to control our lives? Sure he does. He wants us to buy American. I want to buy whatever the hell I want to buy. It's none of his business as president of the United States. What I buy and whom I buy it for. He wants to tell me who to employ, who to invite to my home. He wants to limit immigration. That's command and control. I don't want command and control. The only thing government should do, you've heard me say this many times, is protect my individual rights. And otherwise, leave me alone. You're listening to the Iran Book Show. We'll be right back. Mark your calendar. Objectivist Summer Conference 2017, or OCON 2017 for short, will take place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, June 10th through the 15th. The conference will be held at this historical center of industrial America and will celebrate productive heroes and the heroism of productiveness. They'll also celebrate the 60th anniversary of Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. Visit objectivistconferences.com to explore their first-time attendee discount and special rates for young adults. Students, you can apply for a scholarship to cover some or all of your expenses. Experience the uniquely inspiring events only an Objectivist Conference offers. Register, and you'll have the opportunity to attend intellectually stimulating talks, panel discussions, and workshops with people who share your values. Visit ObjectivistConferences.com and sign up today. That's ObjectivistConferences.com. See you at Ocon 2017. Harvey owns a building and wants to save money by making his heating and cooling system more energy efficient. Ah, uh, yes. But Harvey's afraid of the cost and if he can get a return on his investment. I am indeed. Plus, he's nervous about disrupting the businesses that rent space in his building. Harvey doesn't know what to do with an HVAC system that's seen better days. The Air Comfort Problem Solvers to the rescue. Working as a team, the Air Comfort professionals find simple solutions that make a huge impact on building efficiency and operating costs with minimal or no disruption interruptions to building operations. HVAC upgrades and retrofits from Air Comfort can save thousands of dollars per year. They save energy, reduce maintenance, and eliminate downtime. And buildings with better energy ratings command higher rents and selling prices and make tenants happy. Get real solutions from the Air Comfort team of problem solvers. Call 708-345-1900 or visit aircomfort.com and start saving money today. Air Comfort. Providing the right climate for business since 1935. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, speaks to audiences around the world, promoting Ayn Rand's ideas in talks and books. Now, he's on your radio, here on AM560, The Answer. So one of the issues these March for Science people are making a big deal out of is the funding cuts for science that the uh, Trump administration has suggested. We don't know if it'll ever make the budget, actual budget, but they've suggested. And they're saying this is anti-science. And there's a sense in which I kind of agree with them, right? I mean, it's, it, I think it's wrong for Republicans to come in and defund whole areas of science that don't, they don't agree with. And then they will promote areas of science they do agree with. And when Democrats come, they'll do the opposite. This is why I want a complete separation of science from government. 
Science shouldn't be political. Science shouldn't have to rely on government grants. Science shouldn't have to rely on which political party is in power. Science shouldn't have to rely on a political agenda, on, a, on, on, on political views. Science should be funded by people who believe in science, who love science, who think science is beneficial. It should be funded voluntarily by all of us. I would send a check in to a science foundation if the government got, got out of it. Universities would fund science instead of building beautiful dorms, instead of paying administrators and, and hiring hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of additional administrators. They could, they could use all that tuition money that they've got over the last few decades and fund more science. Corporations would fund science. Businesses would fund science, as they used to do before the government basically monopolized the funding of science. It took it all over. Pharmaceutical companies would fund a lot of basic science because there's a profit motive there. That's the way you get to drugs. So I, I don't worry about the funding of science. What I'd like to see is the government shrink the funding of science to as close to zero as possible, but at the same time, lower taxes to as low as possible and free up capital and make reduce the corporate income tax rate to zero thus encouraging corporations to invest money. So they could do things, the government could do things to free us up. Now, in the meantime, I do wonder whether cuts to science in and of itself is the first thing that should be cut. There's so many stupid things the government does. There's so many wasteful, completely useless things the government does. But... And that they should be cut first. I mean, it's starting with government involvement in healthcare and government involvement with our retirement and government involvement with, with our savings and government involvement in, in, the, in business and in regulations and all that. All of that should be scrapped. And, and at the same time, we should scrap the funding of science and move to a private funding of science model where the science has to stand on its own two feet. It has to prove itself to somebody objective, not to politicians, not to bureaucrats. Not a scientist motivated by politics. Not a scientist motivated by pleasing the political class. But to, to people really who love science, who care about science, who want science. Those are the people who will be funding the science, and therefore we would get real science rather than the political stuff we get today. I'm not saying all science today is political, but there's too much of it. And it's important. Science is way, 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 like education, way too important to leave to the government. I want a government that only does one thing. Protect my rights, a military, a police force, a judiciary system that arbitrates disputes and otherwise leaves us alone. What I want is pure capitalism. You're listening to the Iran Brooks Show, the only place on the planet where you'll hear these views, the views of reason and rationality and science. Talk to you next week. The Iran Brooks Show. Thank you. Radical for capitalism host. Thank Brooke. you, sir. Have a great week. Keep the discussion you too. going. Log on to AynRand.org, your portal to the Ayn Rand Institute. Learn how to apply Ayn Rand's principles in your own life and make sure you.